Here to discuss this jam-packed week in climate change news, we're lucky to have Coral Davenport of the New York Times and also Bill Nye, the science guy, author of the new book, Undeniable Evolution and the Science of Creation. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thank you. Great to be with you. So Coral, let's start with the critics of this uh, Chinese climate deal with the U.S. Senator Jim Inhofe said that it is a non-binding charade and of course the, the pushback there being that this isn't a formalized deal, these are all just promises that are not enforceable. Can you help us understand why the deal was crafted in that way? Uh, sure. So the first thing to recognize is it's not really a deal. There, there wasn't uh, any kind of, um, you know, treaty or accord or, or as, as Senator Inhofe said, uh, legally binding language. Um, what, what President Obama and President Xi are doing is working towards a global international deal uh, that will be signed next year in Paris in 2015. Uh, we had been expecting uh, countries to announce what kinds of targets or what, what positions they'll bring to the table for that deal sometime uh, in, in early next year, probably in, in February or March. So what the two presidents did is they said um, they decided to announce their targets early and to announce them together. Uh, they had both been working behind the scenes separately on their plans on, on what they were going to bring to the table for this broader deal to be signed next year. Um, in many ways, this was, this was a signal of goodwill, a sign that the two biggest emitters, biggest economies are plan to work together um, on, on, on this broader deal. What they want to do is send a signal to the rest of the world that they're taking it seriously, that they want other countries to step in and make pledges. Um, so no, in, in many ways, this was um, a symbol or a signal, not a legally binding deal, uh, but it sets us on the path for a, a broader deal with, with legal elements to be signed um, by the UN next year. So Bill Coral saying here that this is a signal of goodwill rather than an actual deal, although I don't understand. The screen right now says U.S. climate deal with China, and the screen is never wrong. Um, but <laughs> so Where help us screen? understand the significance of, of this agreement with China. The longest journey starts with but a single step. Okay. So just that this that uh, the president of the U.S. was able to negotiate at all with anybody about this is a huge thing because here's my belief in the big picture. If the U.S. were leading the way, if the United States were leading the way in climate change around the world, everybody would be on board. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have this big uh, these continual arguments and. Just watching uh, the screen, which you said is never wrong. <laughs> there's a great many numbers. 2012, 2022, so many percent. By 2030, 2025, okay. that's great. But if the United States were out in front on all this, it wouldn't be an issue. And the, the really, the big picture, uh, having given this a great deal of thought and some analysis, we need a fee and dividend system. You've heard this expression, carbon tax, cap and trade. This is the, but if we had a fee, uh, where everybody who made uh, carbon dioxide into the, put carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, if he or she, if that company was forced to pay a fee into a fund and then we'd redistribute that fee to everybody, uh, middle class people would come out ahead. Rich people in general produce more carbon dioxide than uh, middle class people and they would pay a bigger fee. Companies that produce more carbon dioxide would pay a bigger fee. And then uh, you'd redistribute this so that everybody would uh, feel good about it. And the model for this... So this is this, sort of a, a populist cr climate well, change Well, but proposal. here's the thing. There is a model for this. Alaska. The Alaskan Permanent Fund, where they take money from uh, North Slope oil and gas and redistribute it to Alaska's citizens, works. And by the way, <laughs> Alaska isn't really the most uh, progressive democratic place. And it works there. So this could be done. The key, though, is the U.S. has to lead. So you have a guy from Oklahoma, Inhofe, who's literally written a book believing that climate change is a hoax by most of the people, most of the scientists on Earth. That's really extraordinary. I mean, and now and I'll he's say, head of the Senate yeah, Environmental and just, Committee. And Mr. Inhofe, I know you're out there doing your best. I mean, I have uh, dear friends in Oklahoma, all good. But uh, it's not a hoax. A, a, a conspiracy is a kind of a lazy explanation for things. If only 
If only there was a group of bad guys who were manipulating the system. That's not how it that is. Would make it's it. just, I've always been curious too, what would the incentive be to manufacture something like that? So but, it's just seven billion people breathing and burning the atmosphere and we've accidentally changed the climate. Yeah. Coral, what about India? Bill is talking about the U.S.'s need to lead and to, to be sort of a moral leader on the issue of climate change and an actual leader on the issue of climate change. I know you've been reporting that India is the world's third largest carbon polluter and that they have no plans to curb their emissions for at least the next 30 years. So do you think that this agreement with China could encourage India to make a similar move? Uh, that is certainly one of the intents of this deal, is to prod India, to bring them to the table. Um, right now, we are expecting India to make some kind of announcement in the first half of next year uh, on, on the future of their carbon emissions, on the future, on, on, on their energy plans. Uh, I would not expect to see India to make an offer along the lines of what China made, uh, a year for peak emissions. Um, you know, India is in, in an interesting situation. They, uh, they, ha they have uh, a new prime minister uh, who's very focused on economic growth, but at the same time, um, he has also written a book about climate change and how it's a problem. Um, they, they want to uh, grow their, their energy and electricity sources. They have millions of people without access to electricity. Uh, the question for India is, are they going to try to give those millions of people access to electricity uh, with cheap coal, um, or are they going to try to uh, develop um, wind, solar, low-carbon sources of electricity, which could be more expensive? Mm -hmm. um, watching India's energy economy, energy sector, and how they make those decisions will be crucial, and I think we'll, we'll see them uh, working through that in, in the next year. Bill, let's talk about Keystone Pipeline passed the House this week. Probably going to pass the Senate next week. We'll see whether the president issues a veto or not. What is the actual environmental impact of building the Keystone XL pipeline? Well, the pipeline itself is, if I can use the term, another pipeline. But, <laughs> uh, I think you can use that term. No, yes. but I mean, it's, so it'll take Canadian oil to ports in the south of the U.S. Uh, that's okay. I mean, it's just it's Canadian oil is the dirtiest oil going. It's tar sand, shale goo, whatever the heck. And uh, the very few people who really work on the pipeline when it's done. The whole thing, just in the bigger picture, anything that encourages fossil fuel burning is overall bad. But if we have a cohort, a group of people that doesn't believe that it's overall bad, I'm not sure it's a fight worth fighting. Uh, you know, we have to have compromises. It's just hard, it just breaks your heart. So you the big think picture. it may not be a fight worth having. We should move on to the next battle. Uh, I would like to continue to battle it all the way to the very end because it is ultimately not in anybody's best interest. That's the strange thing. It's just, it's, the climate change has this horrible problem where it's decades away and people just cannot Can't get grasp. their heads around it. Yeah. All right, my thanks to Bill Nye, the science guy, and the New York Times' Coral Davenport for joining me this morning. Thank you both. Thanks, Crystal.